welcome to QLab. In today's video, we're going to be making a very special ink. And I'm getting the recipe from this Dictionary of Applied Chemistry from 1912. So it's over a hundred years old, the recipe. Now the reason we want to make this ink is, well, it's coming up to Valentine's Day and you might want to be writing a special card to someone. And what do you need to write it? Well, some good ink. So, let's have a look at this recipe, and then we can get started. So here we've got the recipe. You can see it underneath this piece of paper. And it says we need galls, that's oak galls. In fact, we're going to cheat a bit with that. We need something called ferrous sulfate, or iron sulfate. Old fashioned word for iron was ferrous or ferric, and that's why its symbol is Fe on the periodic table. Some gum arabic, that's very easy to get hold of, you can get hold of it in a supermarket. Water, very easy to get hold of, and we're not going to use creosote, we're going to use something else, and that's just as a preservative for the ink. Now you can see that it says parts by weight, so it's sort of 1,200 parts by weight, 800 parts by weight, and so on. Well, basically what that means is we just have to balance everything out by weight. So if I used 1.2 grams of galls, I would use 8 grams of ferrous sulfate and 8 grams of gum arabic. Ooh, and that would be 24 grams of water or 24 milliliters of water. Because remember the density of water is 1 gram per mil. So we can change it really easily. So, the cheap thing we're going to do is, rather than using oak galls, I'm going to use tannic acid. Now, oak galls are about 50% tannins, so I'm going to half the amount we're going to add, and we'll get our recipe that way. So, let's get started. So, we're going to have to weigh our materials out, and I'm going to put some gloves on, most of these materials are absolutely fine. There's nothing nasty about them at all. But the ferrous sulfate, this green one here, is not terribly nice stuff. So just to be on the safe side, it's good to have some gloves on. Now, I've got some little beakers here. I have this one that's got a quantity of water in. We're going to use 25 millilitres of water. And I'll just put that at the back for now, because... We don't need that right now. And I've got two other little beakers. In this very small one, we're going to put 0.8 grams of ferrous sulfate. And in this one here, we're going to put 0.6 grams of tannic acid. And this you can just, it's very easy to get hold of. Or you can use iron galls, those little apple like things that you can see on. Um, on an oak tree. But first, we're going to put some of this in. This is called gum arabic. And it's used to make gummy sweets and it's used as a thickener in lots of things as well. So what I need to do is I need to set, because at the minute we're on zero, I need to set my balance for 0.08 grams. Uh, sorry, 0.8 grams. So if I just roll this up to 8, oh hello, we get in there, there we go, so that's now, it's not measuring correctly, so we need to put in the material on this little dish, and we can weigh out 0.8 grams. And this is, this is what tannic acid looks like. It's funny looking stuff. And it smells really nice. It smells, it smells a bit like sawdust. And that kind of scent you get from working in a wood shop. It's very nice stuff. So let's just pop that on there. Ooh, okay.
Now what I need to do is I need to clean off my spatula and this little um, measuring plate. But while I'm doing that, I want to be dissolving up the gum arabic and the tannic acid that's in here. So I'm going to add a little bit of the water that we have. I'm going to actually put in about 15 millilitres into here. Just to start dissolving those bits up because they can take a little, little while. Let's measure out the ferrous sulfate we have here. You see that lovely green coloured iron salt. But we want to set this up to 0.8 again. And we're going to put that into a separate little beaker, just this little one here, because we want, we don't want a reaction to start too quickly between these species. So I'm just going to weigh some of this out. Remember we want that to get to zero. Ferrous sulfate you can get from the garden centre because it's used as a plant fertiliser. So it's not too bad, it's just good to have precautions because it can, you can obviously poison plants if you give them too much of it. And that's one thing you've got to be very careful of. So I'm just adding a little bit of water into this mixture. And we'll give it a little stir around and then we can wait till these solutions fully dissolve. So what we're going to do is we're going to pour in this mixture of ferrous sulfate, so this solution of ferrous sulfate, into a solution that has tannic acid and gum Arabic. We'll see what happens. Did you see that went black instantly or a very deep blue? And this is our ink. To stop things growing in our ink we need to put something that will um, kill off any bacteria or fungi that might grow in there. So I'm just adding a few drops of vinegar. That's all you need to do, just add a few drops of vinegar, makes it a little bit acidic and stops it going off quite so quickly. Let's have a go writing with this. So, You may notice that it doesn't look terribly clear to begin with. And that's because as we lay down the ink, the ink actually forms on the page. Because as the uh, iron tannate reacts with air, it forms an insoluble complex, something that won't dissolve in water. Which means this ink is waterproof. And pretty much whatever you write with it, well, it's called indelible which means it'll pretty much last as long as the piece of paper will. So that's why it's so good for writing a message around Valentine's Day, because of course the message will last for a very long time. So, let me just write down the recipe using our ink. And if you like this video, don't forget to like. Oh, do I have enough ink for this? Let's go in for a another dip, to like, comment, and subscribe. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed, and I'll write out the recipe so that you can all access it. Oh, and before I forget, if you want to store this ink, store it in an airtight bottle with a tight lid so that it will last for as long as possible. So, let's see.
you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video and I hope you find a good use for the ink. It does make quite a lot. Oh, and one quick tip. Try not to use this with a fountain pen because it might block the fountain pen. So if you have like a glass pen or a free flowing nib or even a cut quill, you can use a feather. That would be perfect. Well, I hope I see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching and Goodbye. You know my wife liked me so much. She subscribed for life. Yeah, she married me.